Shino sir. Shino sir. I hope I am audible to everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, my screen is also available to everyone. I am right or not? Ah, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So then, I, now I start my session, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. In the last class, we are discussing about. Uh, in the last class we are discussing about the topic is moving from one system to many so i think the name is implies here we are increasing the productivity so that means increasing the product lines so if you are observing this focus on the construction of multiple systems from the architecture discussing and giving examples of system product lines so here we are discussing about the software product lines so the these software product lines are used for increasing the productivity at the same time throughput also so that means here the main concept is reusing the architectural assets so that means here we are reducing the cost to uh, um, uh, to incrementing the scalability okay so that means here we are increasing the throughput but reducing the cost so the the type of the possibility achieved through by using the software product lines so if you are observe here a software architecture represents a significant investment of time and effort usually by scenario talent senior talent so it is natural to want maximize the returns on investment by reusing an architecture across multiple systems so that means here so when we are developing one software architecture definitely it will be needs lot of time and lot of money and uh, uh, use it for the effort of lot of members 
so when we are using the same type of the assets to developing the another similar type of the architecture then reducing the time to developing those type of similar structures then automatically we are able to get some more benefits after developing the similar type of the software structures okay so artificially mature organizations tend to treat their architectures as valuable intellectual property and look for ways in the which that property can be leveraged to produce additional revenue on reducing the cost so that means here we are able to getting more benefits but using less investment so why because if it is a similar type of the architecture then need not to uh, able to design uh, individually and uh, so that means here reducing the time so the whatever it may be requirement as uh, design implement just only here we try to performing the uh, some more time on the testing so that means here reducing the time and we are able to uh, able to deliver more number of software structures and maintain the quality also why because so those type of structures having the similarity here software product lines based on the inter product commonality represent an innovative growing concept in your software engineering every customer has its own requirements which demand flexibility on the part of the manufacturers software product lines simplify the creation of systems built specifically for particular customers or customer groups so that means when we are developing any type of the architecture first of all these developers identify any any type of the commonalities between them or not so for example if it is huh? a belongs to the hello six four so all of you mute yourself first don't try to create any type of the disturbance some of the members voice is here okay software product lines here mainly observing the commonality and reducing the cost and able to increasing the throughput also that is the main concept of software product lines this topic is we are already discussed in the last class so what makes software product lines work the essence of software product lines is the disciplined strategic reuse of assets in producing family of products so what makes the product line succeed to sp uh, spectacularly from the vendor or developer's point of view is that commonalities shared by the products can be exploited three reuse to achieve the production economy so that means here reducing the economy but increasing the benefits here so that is the main concept of uh, reusing the architectural assets so what we are using uh, here actually uh, reusing means here we are try to Uh, reducing the time to collecting the requirements so most of the requirements are common most, uh, with those of earlier systems and so can be reused requirements analysis is saved so in the same bit then also if the architecture is wrong then we are we are facing problem otherwise we can follow the same design to implementing the new type of new architectures here and uh, here we are uh, consider the elements also software elements are applicable across the individual products for an above mere code reuse the element reuse includes the initial design work design success are captured and reuse design debts and are avoided and not repeated so that means so for example if we are developing one software architecture so if it is similar to the previous one then we can easily identify which type of errors are occurred after designing the in the same way so that means here we are, we are having the chance easily discovering the errors and easily correcting the errors and easily and trace out and avoid the deadlock situations we also know about what is a deadlock so whenever deadlock is happen to the system any one of the process is not able to performing its execution so we are, we are also know about what is a deadlock whenever it is occurred so that means when we are based upon the shared resources so then maybe the chance of occurring the deadlock and we are consider the some conditions also we are already discussed in the last class okay uh next one modeling and analysis performance models schedule building analysis distributed system issues allocation of process to processors fault tolerance schemes and network load policies and carry over from the product to product so we also know about this when we are based upon the distributed operating system so that means then we are allocating individual memories for to the uh, number of uh, individual cpus then need not to based upon uh, one of the processor is not based upon to the another processor execution so at this time of situation we are able to increasing the productivity so that means so when we are developing some new software architectures first of all we try to identify the commonality between them and next we can uh, implement the software architectures easily because those are similar to the previous one so and here reducing the time and we are able to getting the more benefits from this okay
So and here testing is also we are uh, used for to the uh, developed architectures, test plans and test process, test cases, test data and test hardness and the communication paths required to report the fixed problems are already in place. So the project planning, budgeting and scheduling are more predictable because experience is high fidelity indicator of the future performance. Work breakdown structures need not be invented in each time. Teams, team size and team composition are all easily determined because all these are having the common type of the structures. For example, maybe if you are developing some software for the, some particular business organization. So maybe the similar type of the business, then we need not to design individually. So we can use the same type of the software architecture by uh, performing the some modifications onto the existing uh, architecture and easily deliver to those uh, customers within the time then automatically increasing the productivity and reducing the time but increasing the benefit so these are these are the main advantages of reusing the architectural assets okay process and methods and tools configuration and control procedures facilities documentation plans and approval process tools environment system generation and distribution procedures coding standards and many other day-to-day -day engineering support activities can all be carried over from the product to product. The overall software development process is in place and has been used before. So people, because of the commonality of the application, personnel can be uh, fluidity transferred from among projects as required. These, uh, these expertise is applicable across the entire land. So exemplar systems, deployed product servers, high quality demonstration prototypes, as well as high quality engineering models of performance, security, safety, and reliability. So that means here we are easily designed when we are based upon the similar type of the architectures. So and these topics are we have already discussed in the last class and we are observing what is the scoping also. The scope of a product line defines what system are in it and what systems are out. So that means, so we try to identify whether the developer architecture is within the scope or maybe the out of the scope. Otherwise, we are facing number of problems. So maybe the out of the scope related to the related to the financial issue at the same time designing issue at the same time testing issue at the same time, maybe it will not be reached to the desired goals of the customer. So we try to identify whether it is within the scope or maybe the out of the scope. So in this scope here, we are identifying each and everything like maybe the quality attributes at the same time uh, business rules at the same time architectural concepts also okay so if you are observing in this diagram we are easily we are easily identified so that means when we are developing one software architecture first of all we try to identify what we are required now let's verify whether how how much of percentages we are achieved uh, our uh, our desired goal so next we try to verify whether we are in uh, out of the scope or maybe within the scope. If it is out of scope, try to reducing the type of the environment to reach or maybe to lead to the in the our desired goal of the customer. Okay. And next, when we are based upon to the uh, when we are based upon to the product lines. First of all, we try to identify the three things. Those are nothing but identifying the variation points, supporting variation points, validating the architecture for the product lines suitability. So that means when we are based upon the software product lines, first of all, we try to identify where is the occurrence of problems. So then we try to recover the problems. Then we can uh, try to evaluate the total uh, entire system. So those these three points are mentioned here, identifying the variation points, supporting variation points, evaluating the architecture for product line suitability. So what makes software product lines difficult? It takes certain maturity in the developing organization to successfully field in a product line. Technology is not the only barrier to this organization process and business issues are equal vital to master to fully reap the benefits of the software product line approach. Okay, the Software Engineering Institute has identified 29 issues or practice areas the effect organization success feeling software product line. Most of these practice areas are applied during the single system development as well, but take on the new dimension in a product line concept. So that means in some type of situations also, we are uh, we are facing some problems by using the reusing the architectural assets. At this time of situation, we need to identify and we need to correct and we need to uh, testing at that system. So then only we are able to getting the benefits and reducing the cost and reducing the time to developing new software architectures with the quality. And uh, here we are easily performing each and everything, whether it is maybe requirement analysis, designing, coding, testing. And uh, so we are clearly identify which type of errors are occurred and how to record them. 
So that means yeah, when we are based upon to the software product lines. So when we are uh, reusing the architectural assets again. So then uh, those are used for to reducing the time to developing the new software architectures. So all these topics are we are discussed in the last class. Now we are discussing the actual topic today. So that is building systems from off the shelf components. So here we are building the system from off the shelf components. Hello. 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 Some of the members not using mute. Please try to. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. May okay, I continue, sir? sir. Okay, okay, sir. Some of the members not using mute, sir. That's why I'm uh, again. So all of the members, please using mute. Don't try to create any type of the disturbance. Okay, thank you. Now we are going to our actual topic today. So that is. Please wait here one minute. So just up to now, we are revising what we discussed in the last classes. Now we are discussing our new topic today, that is building systems from off-the-shelf components. So that means here we are based upon the off-the-shelf components. So these are also we are referred to as maybe OTS. Okay, OTS means off-the-shelf. of the shelf components ots components okay so these components are used for to um, nothing but achieving the desired quality attributes and we are easily identifying the errors so these components are used for to reducing the time to developing the new software architectures okay so if you are observe here operating systems we are, start, we are we are using from the 1960s and database management systems using from the 1970s because of the ubiquity of computers the possibility of using externally developed components to achieve some systems goals has been increasing dramatically even the availability of components may not cause you to using or keep them but you certainly need to understand how to incorporate them into your system for systems built from of the shelf components component selection involves discovery process which seeks to identify assembles of com compatible components and understanding how they can achieve the desired quality attributes and deciding whether they can be integrated into the system being built so that means the main purpose of using the off the shelf components are used for to maintain the integrity and able to identify whether we are meet, uh, meets the desired quality attributes or not okay uh, impact of the components on the architecture consider the following situation you are producing software to control chemical plant for example maybe if you are implementing the chemical plant with our uh, maybe the some software okay within the chemical plant specialized displays keep the operators informed as the state of the reactions being controlled so that means here we are using different types of the modules are used to control that particular chemical plant for example maybe if you are press that particular button then it will be create some other type of the functionality so in this type of way here we are able to modifying the chemical plant by using the software and reducing the work of the uh, chemical plant functionality by using to developing some other uh, modules in your uh, software architecture a large portion of the software you are constructing is used to draw those displays a vendor seller user interface controls that produce them because it is easier to buy than build so here we decide to purchase the controls which by the way are only available of the visual basic so that means here we are based upon to the one of the design decision so this is a fundamental structural decision driven by the choose a single component for a single portion of the system okay the use of the shelf components in software development while essential in many cases also introduce new challenges so that means by using the off the shelf components so that means here we are mainly focus on to the modules in a software architecture okay so now we are verifying those type of modules are meets the desired quality or at the same time those are able to 
cooperate with the some other modules in the software architecture or not at the same time here we are uh, able to identify the errors also by using the off the shelf components in particular component capabilities and liabilities are principal architectural constraints so architectural mismatches in some type of situations we are not able to meet our desired quality so that means here occurring the problem is architectural mismatch so that means here we try to identify where the where is the chance of maybe the chance of occurring the errors so we try to know where is the uh, occurring uh, where is the problem so architectural mismatch is a special case of inter interface mismatch so where the interface is fairness defined that is assumptions that components can make about each other so that means here in some type of situations maybe the problem is occurred so that is architectural mismatch that means nothing but uh, interface mismatch so that means what is the purpose of interface those are provide easier interaction with the users for the uh, using the software okay so in some type of situations may be occurring the problem so this definition goes beyond what has unfortunately become the standard concept of interface in a current practice a components api application programming interface okay an api names the programs and their parameters and may something about their behavior but this is only the small part of the information needed to correctly use as a component so side effects consumption of the global resources coordination requirements and like they are necessary part of the an interface and are included complete interface specification so that means here so we try, first of all we try to identify where is the uh, occurring where is the occurrence of the error next we try to solve that error so that means basically the, those type of errors are occurred from the interfaces why because so when uh, here the users not having the programming knowledge this they are pressing some buttons or maybe click some buttons or maybe selecting some uh, particular menus or maybe some module in the software if if those type of modules are properly uh, not responded the, those type of modules are not properly responded then occurring the problem so that means that is the problem of interface here so here we try to identify where is the which type of interface is creating the problem so and this will be creating the lot of the problems so we try to identify where is the chance of occurring thus those type of errors interface mismatch can appear an in integration time just like the architectural mismatch but it can also leads to runtime errors mentioned before so these assumptions can take two forms provide assumptions describe the services as a component provides to its users or clients so that means here we are uh, th these type of uh, problems can be giving the some assumptions to describe uh, to giving the description to the either users or maybe the clients requires assumptions detail the services or the resources that a component must have in order to correct these assumptions are used to uh, nothing but correct the services and mismatch between the two components actors when they provides requires assumptions do not match up okay requests what can you do about the interface mismatch Mis uh, besides changing the requirements so that yesterday bug is it today's future so that means if you are not observing the errors what, uh, what which type of errors are occurred today so those are creating lot of problems in the future so am i right or not so that means whenever occurring the problems in the software architecture first of all we try to identify next we try to correct them okay so that means we try to performing the detection also you yeah, avoid it by carefully be specifying the inspecting the components for you the system detect those cases you have not avoided by the careful qualification of the components so repair those cases you have detected by adapting those concepts the rest of this section will deal with the techniques for avoiding detecting and repairing mismatch okay so that means here we are related with the three types of concepts those are how we are avoiding the mismatches how we are detecting the mismatches and how we are uh, repairing the mismatches so techniques for repairing interface mismatch so that means when we are developing some software architecture first of all we try to care for each and every module in a software architecture so if those type of modules are properly uh, not properly functioned then occurring the problem so that means creating the interface problems so here first of all we try to identify where is the chance of occurring that interface problem so next we try to recover that problem or maybe repair that problem in some type of situations we try to take some precautions those are nothing but avoiding the mismatches okay in the interfaces so now we're discussing about the techniques for re repairing interface mass mismatch okay to date mismatch correction 
our com our component interface repair has re received little systematic attention terms such as component glue or evocative of the character of the integration code and reflect the second class status we assign to its development so that means here we try to identify the uh, identify the techniques for repairing the interface mismatch often repairing interface mismatches is seen as a job of hackers so hacks involved in the integrating of the shelf component so that means by using the of the shelf components we are able to recover the errors in the previous uh, slide also i am mentioning about to that by my, the main purpose of using the of the shelf components here we are build the systems from of the shelf components so that means these components are used for reducing the uh, chance of happening the errors and able to recover the errors at the same time here we are providing some integration with the different types of modules in your software architecture however as often the case weak link in the chain defines the chain strength so that means here we are identifying the uh, chain strength thus the quality of the component repair may be directly responsible for achieving or failing to achieve system wide quality attributes such as availability modifiability security performance throughput so all these are the quality attributes so that means whenever we are facing some problems then automatically it will be influences to the different types of the things so maybe those are related to the quality attributes at the same time business attributes at the same time architectural attributes also so techniques for detecting the interface mismatch so here we are using some techniques so that means here in the case of previous case here we try to identify the every module so that means here we are clearly performing the detection where is the chance of occurring the problem next we try to repair that module okay so next one techniques for detecting the interface mismatch in order to repair mismatches we must first detect or identify them we present the process or identifying the mismatches as an enhanced from component qualification the 10 component qualification has been used to describe the process of determining whether a commercial component satisfies various fitness or used for criteria so that means here we are first of all detecting the interface mismatch so that means try to performing the unit testing clearly so that means before delivering the software to the end users we try to performing the testing within the efficient type of way so that means here we are verifying the unit testing and try to identify the architectural mismatches or we try to identify the interface mismatches then we try to repair or maybe the first of all we try to detect them where is the chance of occurring the mismatches of interfaces here why because these interfaces are easily providing the interaction with the software so if that uh, interface is not uh, a, not properly functioned then users also not easily interacting with the our software so then automatically it will be uh, le leads to the uh, problem of flexibility with the users so if the users having the flexibility and may we are uh, avoiding the complexity or maybe the ambiguity then it will be having the lot of market so or maybe the it will be having the lot of demand so for using that particular type of the software architecture so that means here this is completely based upon to the software architecture so here we try to identify the some component qualification process include prototype integration of candidate components as an essential step in qualifying a component so this integration step discusses subtleties from the interface mismatch that are difficult to detect such as resource contention the need for this step is a tactic acknowledgement for our poor understanding of component interface so techniques for avoiding the interface mismatch one technique for avoiding the interface mismatch is to undertake from the earliest phases of the design a disciplined approach to specifying many assumptions about a component interface as feasible so that means in the case of avoiding is possible through Uh, we, we, if you are uh, performing the design efficiently if you are performing the implementation efficiently then uh, it will be reducing the chance of occurring the mismatches am i right or not so that means if you are uh, properly designed and if you are properly implemented that uh, whatever it may be our desired uh, and goals to be me goals to be met so those type of uh, implementation will be reducing the chance of occurring the interface mismatches so is it feasible or even uh, possible to specify all of the assumptions are a component makes about the its environment are that components used or allowed to make about it is there many evidences that is practical to specify an important subset of assumptions and that is phase 2 to s 
So the A27E software design partitioned the system into hierarchical tree of modules with three modules at the highest level decomposed into about 120 modules at the leaf. So that means, for example, this is a uh, example here. So A to A-7E software design. So partition into the hierarchical tree of modules. So that means when we are designing some software architecture, so it will be having different types of modules. Now we are consider those modules into a hierarchy. So that means, uh, for example, according to our college. So entire our college will be we are able to divide into the some hierarchy. So the in the first hierarchy we are place the principal. Next we can place the HODs. Next we can place the lecturers. Next we can place the students. Uh, next we can place the uh, maybe the technicians. Next we can place the students. So that means why we are maintaining this hierarchy? For example, if any type of the problem is occurred, so that type of problem is first of all solved through technicians. If that problem is not uh, solved through technicians, then we can go for the lecturers. If that's a problem is not solved by the lecturers or maybe the uh, maybe the assistant professors, then it uh, that problem will be solved by the HOD, head of the department. If that problem is not able to solve it by the HOD, then that problem will be solved by the principal. Am I right or not? So that means here we are maintaining some hierarchy within that modules. So when we are based upon these modules, here we are easily identify where is the chance of uh, occurring the errors. So that means here we are performing the decomposition clearly. So that means performing the unit testing efficiently. So then we are able to uh, recover the, uh, repair the uh, mismatches and detect the mismatches and uh, avoid the mismatches. So that means here if we are performing the unit testing clearly. So and another thing, designing is also the most important uh, step to avoid the mismatches of the interfaces. So that means, so if we are if we are properly designed the software architecture, then there is no chance of occurring the mismatches. If you are implementing the according to the design without fail, then there is the reducing the chance of occurring the mismatches. Am I right or not? So, specification was written for each leaf module to include access the programs. What would now be called methods and object-based design? The parameters that required and returned, the visible effects of calling the program, the system generation parameters that allow compile time, tiling of the module, and a set of symptoms. About dozen for each module. So that means here we are reducing the complexity to performing the decomposition or to identify or to inspect the submodules uh, clearly. So then there is the chance of occurring the errors here. Okay, then, then there is the reducing the chance of occurring the errors or maybe the reducing the chance of mismatches in the interfaces. Okay, next component based design as I said. So that means uh, how we are uh, uh, designing the component or maybe the module. Since the component capabilities and liabilities are principal source of architectural constraints in the system development. And since systems use multiple components, component based system design becomes a search for compatible examples of the shelf components that come the closest meeting the system objectives. So that means here, com first of all, uh, we try to identify component capabilities at the same time component liabilities so these two are the main principles of the architectural constraints so that means when we are developing some software architecture so these two things are the main next multiple components uh, when we are using the multiple components then based upon to the off the shelf components these are used for to meet the our desired needs or maybe the desired objectives Okay, the architect must determine it is enable architecture to validate whether the ensemble can live in the architecture and support the requirements. So then, uh, we are uh, performing the uh, we are uh, performing the design is efficiently and uh, performing the implementation is also efficiently. So in effect, each possible ensemble amounts to continue to the path of action this exploration should initially focus on the feasibility of the path to make sure there are no significant architectural mismatches that cannot be reasonably adapted it must also take into the account the feasibility of the repair and residual risk remaining once repair is complete. before, uh, before uh, we can start a type, type of soft architecture development first of all we try to performing the feasibility study so that means whether we are able to whether whether we are able to excuse me okay whether we are able to reach our expectations or not okay 
so the for example maybe Uh, we are implementing this option. so we try to perform in some forecasting so that type of the uh, things are related to the feasibility so that means whether we are able to completing this software architecture project within the our budget or not within the, our uh, uh, within our particular whatever it may be having the pupil at the same time whatever it may be having the days so that means here we are verify whether we are completed within our plan or not okay so if we are uh, uh, if we are completed that so then there are, there is chance of occurring the reducing the chance of occurring the mismatches so most of the six steps can be executed in the sequence so that means when we are developing some software so then definitely uh, these six steps are also used and another thing so these are used for reducing the chance of happening the interface mismatches so the architect and design engineers identify design question. So the design question initiates the model problem referring to an unknown that is expressed as a hypothesis. That means here, uh, before developing any type of the software uh, architecture should be based upon the some of the design issues. So those type of design issues are related to meet the our desired needs of the customer or maybe the end user or maybe the stakeholder. At the same time, those are maybe the desires of the software developer also so that means here the question is the design question initiates the model problem referring to an unknown that is expressed as a hypothesis so that means first of all we are having some uh, some assumption so the architect and the engineers define the starting evaluation criteria these criteria describe how the model solution will support contradict the hypothesis so that means so how we are achieving that particular assumption for example maybe our goal for example maybe so before developing that software architects should be having the some clear clarity about the goal so what will to be what to be we are achieved after developing the software architecture so next we try to identify performing the evaluation and we try to identify the support to reach that particular hypothesis third one the architect and the engineers define the implementation constraints so the implementation constraints specify the fixed part of the design context that governs the implementation of the model solution. These constraints might include such things, platform requirements, component versions, and business rules. So that means if we are observing clearly, so these are same like as a software engineering development cycle. So that means initially we are verifying the requirements. Next, we try to forming the design according to the collecting requirements. Next, performing the testing. Next, performing the and as to releasing the software to the end users am i right or not so if you are observing here if you are using the same uh, we are using the same steps so the first step is here we try to perform the design clearly next we try to performing the evaluation on that next we try to uh, implementing whatever it may be we are having the plan okay next the fourth thing is the engineers produce a model solution situated in the design constraints the model solution is a minimal application that uses only the features of component are necessary uh, to support or contradict the hypothesis so that means here uh, the engineers produce a model solution so this solution is we are verifying whether it is supports to the our uh, hypothesis or not next fifth one the engineers identifying the ending evaluation criteria the ending evaluation criteria include the starting step starting step plus criteria that are discovered by product of implementing a model solution so here we are uh, performing the evaluation and here we are ending the evaluation of the criteria and the sixth one the architect performs evaluation of the model solution against the ending criteria the evaluation may result the design solution being rejected or adapted in a similar fashion so that means when we are based upon the component uh, uh, component based design as a such then here we, we are using these six steps first of all we are having some design next we try to perform some evaluation next we are implementing that uh, whatever it may be we are having the constraints next we try to identify that uh, that uh, whatever it may be a result so that will be reaches to the our hypothesis or not and ending the evaluation and finally here uh, we are identified so how much of uh, a result we are achieved so that means in the case of uh, when we are developing some software we are using prototypes so what is the meaning of prototypes here first of all we try to implement with we are implement the actual goal 
with the minimum number of experiments for example if it is if it is needs to complete maybe 3 months then we try to complete the prototypes within a week if it is success then we can implement the actual goal so the same thing will be followed here so that means performing the evaluation whether we are uh, able to complete uh, with the efficient uh, quality or not with the uh, within the time or within the budget or not so all these are verified here and these type of design issues are leads to the to solve the some of the problems what are it may be occurring the, in the case of uh, uh, in the case of occurring the mismatches in the interfaces okay so next one you know, if you are observing the steps to model the to model a problem okay so if you are observing this so first here architect and engineers first of all able to define the problem so define hypothesis define criteria and define constraints so these are related to the requirement analysis at the same time goals also so that means first of all before developing any type of the software architecture so that type of the software architect or maybe the developer or maybe the engineer having the some uh, clear idea about what to be we are achieved so that's why here mentioned define hypothesis define criteria and define constraints so what type of constraints are needed to achieving those type of qualities and uh, what is our assumption or maybe what is our hypothesis or which type of criteria is used so hypothesis is not uh, uh, is not testable okay so then occurring the problems so if you are observing here define models a problem so next engineers the in dev define a model solution so that means based upon collecting these requirements these engineers giving some solution now architects performing the evaluation that uh, that particular solution is suitable to meets the desired needs or not or desired goals or not so this is the procedure to solving the problem okay so the, uh, these are the steps in the component based design okay next uh, we are discussing about the aslim example please wait here one minute so what is the aslim so the aslim is the aslim is uh, nothing but sci means software engineering institute so if you are observing the last line so aslim means automated software engineering institute license management so that means uh, here how we are implementing this so which type of steps to be involved so there all these are we are discussed here our example centers around the web based information system developed at the software engineering institute so that is sei so please try to remember this word or maybe note down in our notes so in the exam point of view maybe explain aslim so a s e i l m so that means uh, maybe clearly uh, maybe the asking the questions in some type of situations in the indirect way also so we try to remember this aslim so aslim means automated software engineering institute license management okay i think the name is in place here uh, what which type of things are we are uh, discussed here so to support the distribution of software engineering institute licensed materials such as courses and assessment kits and authorized individuals to collect administrative information for the assessments to graphically present the revenue attendance and other information about the sei's li licensed material to track course attendance and royalties due to sei so aslim must support the following multiple user types each with varying authorization to perform system functions course instructors can input course attendance list sheets maintain contact information and download course materials lead access can have set up assessments input assessment information and download assessment kits so software engineering institute administrators can maintain list of authorized instructors and lead accessors as well as view of or edit information maintained by the system okay so here we are verifying the some quality attributes also so in the case of quality attributes we are verifying the requirements and we are verifying the functionality so provide web based access to the geographical dispersed customer base and verifying the performance and verifying the compatibility security okay so that means if you are observing the aslim so in the case of aslim so what is aslim automated software engineering institute license management so uh, so if you are observing this one so this will be completely related with the web based information 
so here we are giving uh, some license management so in this one here we are so this is same like as our online classes so actually here on cl online classes are delivered from lecturers to students am i right or not but this session is arranged by some instructors so these instructors are controlled by some other head of the departments these head of the departments are controlled by the principals so that means when we are based upon to the some institute so definitely here we are based upon to the some instructors so if you are observing this to support the distribution of sei licensed materials such as courses and assessment kits and authorized individuals so that means here we are verifying who is authorized and which courses are assigned to them and assessment kits so like maybe the assignments to collect the administrative information for the assessments to graphically present revenue attendance and other information about the sci licensed materials to track course attendance and royalties due to sci so sci must support the following multiple user types so each with varying user authorization to performing system functions so that means when we are based upon the some software so if for example if that software is related to giving uh, to uh, to to arrange the online classes for the students so that is the our main aim of uh, our uh, developed architecture for example maybe we can consider the zoom okay so in this zoom how we can uh, how, uh, how how the designers following the design issues so first of all one of the person is act like as a host and that person make like as a co-host for the another person now we are arranging some session for to the students and here we are able to giving some assessments to the students so now we are able to identify those type of assessments are reached by to the students or not so that means all these things are verified here so in the same way here in the case of slim also uh, using the course instructors can input course attendance list so we are able to identify how many numbers how many number of students are maintaining the attendance attendance here and maintain the content information for example if a uh, if you if you having any type of the problem you are able to easily uh, contact that uh, contact that person and solving that problem and download the course material so that means here now i am sharing some slide to the uh, some slide to the students am i right or not so that means the this uh, this type of information is also downloaded by to the clients so that means this is the example for slim so automated software engineering institute license management how we are able to design this lead access can set up assessments and input assessment information and download assessments so sci administrators can maintain list of authorized instructors and lead accessors and as well as view or edit any information maintained by the system so that means here so when we are consider this this type of example mainly consider the sum of the attributes those are quality attributes those are the first one is identify the whether we are able to reach the desired quality or not at the same time we are identifying the functionality so whether it will be uh, performing the properly functioning or not and here we are identifying the here we are identifying the performance okay and next we are identifying the compatibility next we are verifying the security and next we are verifying the uh, maybe the portability so the, in this type of way we are observing different types of the quality attributes when we are developing some software architecture so that means today we are discussing about the off the shelf components these are used for reducing the chance of happening the errors and able to providing the integration within the modules so by using the off the shelf components we are able to uh, reach the our desired goals so in some type of situations occurring the problems those are architectural mismatches so first of all we try to identify them next we try to repair them or we try to avoid them so those are possible through if you are implementing the design properly only and here we are using component based design uh, uh component based uh, component based design so in that one here we are following the six steps first of all we try to uh, giving some hypothesis if you are observing this diagram first of all we are define hypothesis define criteria and define constraints next uh, define uh, some solution now verifying that solution is able to reach the our desired needs or not so here now we are discussing some example okay this is our today's session in the last in the next class we are able to uh in the next class we are discussing the last topic of the second unit so that is the uh, that is architecture business cycle in the future okay software architecture in the future that is this is the last topic of the second unit 
you try to post uh, you try to interact with me if you having any type of the doubts please try, please try to uh, to please try to drop a message in the chat box okay otherwise we can end the session and uh, after the completion of this unit uh, i will post the material into our group don't worry about this so up to now i am not giving this material to you so after the in the next class uh, uh, completely uh, we are ending the second unit next i am placing the uh, same material into the group uh, every day i am uh, posting my videos whatever whatever it may be i am discussing today so up to now so those all those are uploaded and giving the youtube links also in the group so please try to follow that if you having any type of the doubts you please ask me otherwise we can end the session if you have any type of the doubts please raise your hand srinivas sir srinivas sir okay we can end the session if you have any type of the doubts please contact through my personal number okay otherwise you can ask the in the next session so why because uh, just only you have, we are having only one topic tomorrow so it will be completes within uh, 10 or maybe the 15 minutes remaining uh, uh, time is uh, used for to discuss our doubts if you have any type of the doubts okay and uh, uh, i am assigning one assignment to you so you try to complete that assignment and send to my mail within the time so today i am observing that you please try to send the assignment who are not submitting up to now so in the evening i am uh, verifying that and uh, able to identify who are not uh, uh, sending the assignment also okay thank you thank you everyone if you having any type of the utmost problems you can uh, contact srinivas sir thank you